Okay, so in the last video we uh, we put our materials onto our uh, vertex painting mate uh, material. So we put our textures onto the vertex painting material. In this video, I'm going to put uh, some water in there so that we can paint puddles in. Okay, so this is the material that we had. So we have we've got a bit of uh, some nodes going on that will control the fall off on the edges of our uh, vertex painting then we've just got the vertex paints for the diffuse setup and for the roughness and for the normal okay so to create a bit of water this is going to be pretty easy I'm just going to get a uh, three vector and I'm going to make it maybe a sort of muddy brown color for this uh, I want definitely want to keep this very dark though so don't don't come too high with your your brightness values for this um, then I'm going to get this lerp and copy it and the one that we've got is going to go into A and then this water is going to go into B and we're going to power it through uh, the blue vertex color so that's going to flow through this and then I'm going to create this lerp again similar to what we did here just so that I can control how much of the fall off this fall off uh, maths we want to use and how much of just the vertex color we want to use now I think for the water we're actually going to want this all the way up at one uh, not 41 one so we want to use this bit of code here the other thing is I want to change this texture coordinate probably to about one and one um, just because that will that'll give us a more natural looking fall off the edges of the puddles I think um, so that's it done that just needs to plug into the base color instead of that one then let's do the same for our roughness so our roughness is going to be um, either this is going to go in or we're just going to use a, uh, a simple uh, value for the roughness and the roughness is going to be very low so basically zero um, let's try 0 0.05 in there and this is going to control the alpha for that and it looks like I didn't hook the alpha up for that uh, just a second okay um, so that's our roughness and our diffuse and let's do the same for the normal for the moment I'm just gonna plug sort of nothing into the normal um, so let's just make a, a three vector and let's put in 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 1 just so that we get a kind of base normal map color so it'll just be flat at the moment I'll probably put a kind of uh, rippling water texture on it in the normal map in a bit so that needs to be powered by our alpha and that needs to go into our normal okay hopefully that should be all nicely set up so this is going to be our our water texture here uh, very simple so now if I get my blue channel and paint some of that in we should start to see something that looks a little bit like a puddle um, what I've done is I've just had to uh, just make sure you've got a sphere reflection capture in your scene otherwise this will look a bit it won't look too great um, so I can paint in some water what I think is quite nice is if you paint the water in to these areas where I've got this dark material like that and maybe some around the edges and stuff as well for that puddle in the corner over there um okay i'll leave that how it is for now 
Right, the, this is getting there, it just looks slightly unnatural because the water should be um, a little bit transparent. So just to, to fake that effect, um, what I'm going to do is instead of just having this muddy colour as, uh, as our texture, what I'm going to do is to multiply that muddy colour just with all the textures that are underneath it, just so it'll kind of uh, it'll have that blended into it like that. Okay, so now it sort of looks as though there's a, a little bit of transparency on that and you can see through it. Um, I probably want to get rid of these little bits that are showing through. So I think to do that, I think that's just this this multiply here needs to go up just a little bit more. A bit more still. There we go. Okay, so I might play around with those that kind of multiply node a little bit to um, to get that transparency effect how I want it. But that's getting there. These kind of looking like puddles now. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll displace the texture so that um, the areas that are like this are a little bit lower down in the world so it looks like the concrete's kind of pitted and down and then we can put our puddles inside those dips. Okay so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to turn on um, tessellation. So if you find our, just grab the, uh, the sort of this material nodey bit and come down here and turn on tessellation. I'm going to use PN triangles for this. Okay, so now we've got tessellation turned on. We need to input some data into the world displacement and the uh, something just to tell it how much to tessellate as well. So uh, we can put something into there straight away. Let's just put a value in there. So tessellation multiplier, let's turn this up to, I think, something like two. I'm not sure you can go much higher than that, to be honest. Um, if I just apply that, and I'm just going to turn on my wireframe to see what's going on. Okay, so that's all like very tessellated now. Uh, that looks fine. We should have enough there to to kind of tessellate these areas. Okay, so in order to uh, tessellate something, I'm going to need to get my world space normals. Uh, so that's going to be this vertex normal world space. And I just need to multiply that by a value, basically. So the value we're going to use is going to be out of this lerp from the green channel. So this green channel is uh, are these kind of dark bits of um like mossy muddy concretey stuff so i'm going to grab the the lerp, this lerp here so the stuff that's gone through the bit of maths that we did and we've decided where we want that fall off to be and then i'm just going to multiply that by the world space normals here uh, what i might do is just move all this down here uh, so we multiply those put them into the world displacement and that will do what we want but it's this effect just isn't going to be strong enough probably so let's just multiply um, let's say by 50 into the world displacement and let's apply that. And we should see that these areas start to stick up now. Like that. 
Um, so that's kind of okay, except that's obviously a bit extreme. And also we don't want them to stick up, we want them to stick down. So uh, first of all, that multiplies obviously a little bit high. Let's try that at a value more like 10. And let's also put in a one minus node here. Okay, so now these, instead of going uh, up, they're sticking down in the world, and that's looking a bit better. You can see where we've painted our puddles in. Um, we've got some problems though, so we need to fix that. And these are a little bit too extreme still as well, so let's turn the multiply down. Maybe just about five will do. That's looking better. Okay, so I want to be able to sort of paint these puddles a bit into these cracks. Um, but I don't want the I don't want the puddles to uh, kind of go down on this slope like this because that obviously just looks very unnatural. Um, so I need to make sure that where the puddles are, they they are flat. Okay, so to sort out this final bit, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a multiply of my world space normals again. And I'm going to do one minus of that because I want it to be the other way around. So I just want that to be a minus thing so that the puddles stick in. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get another lerp and I'm just going to drive the the tessellation through that lerp. So I'm just going to say that um, we want this stuff that we set up with that texture to be in A. I want the puddle stuff to be in B. And I'm going to drive that through the lerp for the puddles. So anywhere that there is a puddle is going to do this bit and anywhere that there isn't a puddle is going to do this bit. And I think my multiply is going to have to be a little bit higher just to get the puddles the right distance. Supply that. Oops, sorry, so uh, let's remember to hook it up and then apply it. And now my puddles are just kind of set at a, a, a certain height. Um, they're a little bit too low, so let's just change this multiplier to be four. Uh, sorry, two, say. And now they're kind of painted into little uh, dents in the ground. like that. So they're a bit high actually because they're coming up higher than this bit is. But I think what I'll do is just 
alter that multiplier for this. So let's say that's that probably wants to be two as well. And this can be sort of 2.5. There we go, that looks better. So now it kind of dents in and then it gets a little bit lower where the, where the puddles are. Okay, so the next step with this would be to um, to make these puddles look a little bit better. Uh, I think I definitely need a bit of work on my shader. They will look better if there is some geometry in here because they obviously operate on, um, they're gonna look realistic when they're reflecting stuff. Uh, there's nothing really to reflect at the moment. Maybe if I, if I move my light source around. Uh, the one. Yeah, I don't think that makes a lot of difference. Um, it just needs some, it needs some geometry in here. We need a normal map on these puddles with a bit of a rippling texture and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial though because that's not really in the realms of vertex painting anymore. So I think that will be it. Uh, like I say, this definitely needs more tweaking, needs more work, but the the principles are all there. So I hope that helped.